Hey everybody. Today is January 26th. It's my day 1.259 and I always get a little nervous when I make videos back to back to back because that can mean that there's some drama. Uh, once a day back to back to back. If I made multiple in a day then yeah there'd be lots of drama going on. So maybe not <clears throat> so much but it is uh, my lunch break, and uh, here it is uh, lunchtime, and I'm still in my nightgown. And uh, it's my nightgown, and a cardigan over it, and a pair of sneakers. And uh, this definitely is my style, uh, for lack of a better word. Did not shave yesterday or today. I don't know if you can hear that. So I feel a bit run down for lack of a better word. And um, my friend Jamie, you know, kind of sent me a message this morning that was like, you know, hey, how are you? I was thinking about you. And I was thinking somewhat about that when I dropped off my daughter for school. And, you know, as a mommy, you're so, as a parent, you're so involved in your child's life. And, and you kind of come back home and Very few people, excuse me, the emotional, emotional spike there. I wish I could just cry right away. I need little flags like, you know, crying, need to cry, want to cry. Um, at the risk of sounding poor me-ish, you know, I, I don't have anyone in my life. I don't have a spouse. I don't know anyone. I don't have a lover. I don't have a romantic interest. I don't have a, a, and I hate to say I don't have a friend like that because I think out of all the people, you know, I would consider Jamie a definite good friend and Lacey a good friend and Megan. I mean, there's other people. Trans Woman National has been really, really good for friends, but as far as someone who's kind of going to stay up with you every so often and, and whatnot, you know, I don't necessarily have that, and I don't mean that as a complaint, and it's not meant as a guilt trip for anyone. It's just the way things are. You know, I'm very much a solitary person. Um, um, my uh, horoscope, and it might be just whatever's, whatever was written on the menu at the Chinese restaurant. I think I, I was born in the year of the rat. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, but, you know, does not make friends easily. You know, the, the friendships that I make are very, very strong, but they're few and far between, at least according to the, the menu at the Chinese restaurant. And as we know, Chinese restaurant menus are always right on target, much like the fortune cookies. So, but again, to have someone to say, well, how are you? And... You know, I feel like if, if someone wants to say that to me, you know, I'd say, I'm, ooh, emotion. I need something I can do that with. Emotion. Here, I'll use this. I'll use this little paintbrush. Emotion. Uh, I need, oh, how are you? I would say I am barely holding it together. <laughs> Uh, I am doing very well as a middle-aged trans woman who is um, eight weeks and six days away from having surgery that she's wanted to have all her life. I am fairly good holding it together to be kind of the single parent of a child um, who has had a lot of pain this week. I don't, I don't like seeing my child in pain. My daughter sprained her ankle. I'm happy to say that's on the recovery. She's on the mend. We finally figured out we, we took her to the regular doctor, not the immediate care center, and the regular doctor gave her a really cool boot. It's got a little hydro, has a pump in it so she can pump it up and it locks her le ankle. I mean, everything's good there. But I, this morning I kind of said to my daughter, because I, I kind of feel like betwixt you and I, 
I feel like my daughter and I are experiencing a lot of the same things right now. My daughter is 11 years old. Um, her body is undergoing changes. My body is undergoing changes. I just switched over to uh, injectable. Uh, so for 19, 20 months, for 19 months, I was on the patch. And then now I'm on the injectable. And so my body is adjusting to that. I feel like her and I have this, you know, my body, chemically things are changing. And I said to her, I said, you know, I'm not upset about anything, but I have the need to cry. I feel like I just want to cry. I just, I just want to let it out. Okay. I just want to cry. And it's, it's so hard for me to do that. And not because I have like, you know, this false machismo, you know, men don't cry, you know, there's no crying in baseball. Uh, it's just, I don't, you know, again, for me to let that through, I don't, I don't know why. And for a while I thought that maybe it was the Zoloft and I'm still kind of dealing with that and I'm, you know, I'm in, I adjusted my Zoloft so I wouldn't be a Zoloft zombie with, with the advice of my counselor. I went and I saw my doctor, et cetera, et cetera. So that still is going on, but I just feel this need to cry and just let it out and just cry. I need that release and I can't seem to get it. Maybe if I, no, it's not going to do it. That'll make me sneeze. Um, so I have that on the back burner. So if someone was to say, how are you doing? I would say I am doing fairly well for someone who is uh, not on the verge of a nervous breakdown, but for someone who has so many, you know, plates, so many, so many plates spinning on sticks, you know, as far as the surgery and everything else goes. And so, I, again, I think I would say I'm doing pretty well there. But there's definitely a lot of chaos. And the thing that I talked to my daughter this morning, I said to her is, you know, anytime we have change in our life, we have stress. You know, stress, unfortunately... Uh, has this bad rep you know it's bad it's bad it's bad well it's a natural reaction to change and so there's good stress and bad stress or whatever just stress and you know in my life in the last week okay i've changed to this an uh, injectable and uh waiting for the promise of you know better everything you know everyone's oh injectables are so much better well i'm i'm waiting for that okay i'm not quite convinced yet on it uh, but definitely a shift from having a steady, steady patch transdermal estrogen to something that's a lot of estrogen at one time. Okay, so some stress there. Uh, my my workplace uh, offered me the option to work become a work from home person, and that's what I've done. And so. There's been a lot of times this week I've been filling out forms and, and I had to clean out my desk at work, uh, which I did last week over the weekend. And that was somewhat happy stress, but still, you know, place that I have worked for 18 years uh, to pack up your box like you're getting fired, you know. And there's been some stress with that. I have to do some structural changes here to the house to bring my, my home office up to speed. So that's stress. And then um, good stress uh, as far as the surgery goes. Uh, I definitely have been eating what I would consider to be a whole balanced diet. And because of that, I've gained 12 pounds in the last week. Okay. Uh, which you would expect. I mean, I knew that going into it with what I was doing. It was not a crash diet. But uh, human beings, what we are. If you take out salt and you take out animal fat and, you know, no dairy, no this, no that, no other, you will lose weight. But I feel like you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a whole, I mean, in my experience, I was a whole person and then I cut out these things and then I became kind of an empty shell of a person that was collapsing and therefore I was looking like I was smaller and smaller and I weighed less and less but I was a husk of a person. And so now I'm eating again, natural 
Okay, I've, I've not had junk food. You would say, oh my gosh, I would have potato chips or Twinkies or cupcakes or, you know, candy or sh some shit like that. No, my dear friends. No, no, no. I've only put sour cream in my chili. I didn't even put meat in my chili. I still stuck to the tofu, okay, <laughs> and beans. Uh, so no, I didn't go ape shit. Now I did a couple days ago, two days ago, my daughter and I had pizza and, and chicken wings. So yes, that was not healthy junk food, but that was again, once in a, once in a blue moon occasion. Okay. I could do it tonight, but I know it wouldn't be healthy. Okay. So, but again, it's a little bit of stress and I think stress on our bodies and specifically for me getting used to animal uh, nutrition from an animal-based source like cheese or fat. Um, I made spaghetti, I made a rigatoni last night, baked, baked the rigatoni, um, and of course that had a little bit of cheese on it, it had Italian sausage in it, it was pasta. Uh, you know, every single bit of it is something I didn't eat a week ago. Pasta, meat, cheese, uh, tomato sauce out of a jar, okay, that's got a lot of sodium in it. So again, stress, my body is, you know, encountering change, I guess is what I'm, I'm building up to. So, um, and also the, the stress somewhat of, uh, you know, again, you say, thank goodness I'm having surgery and I wouldn't exchange where I am today with where I was a week ago um, or previously. But, you know, now it's it's uh, getting the logistics of plane tickets and hotel rooms. And again, it's it's positive, but it is also stress. So I think there's just a lot of that going on. And then um, on our environment around me, today is the first day that we have had sun and I am loving it. I am definitely a sunny bunny. OK, I was born in Florida. I was raised in Florida. And so you'd say, why in the hell did you move to Indiana? I can't tell you that because it was just life, okay? Um, and I have plans to get the fuck out of here, okay? With as <laughs> I can. <laughs> but my daughter has to graduate high school. We have seven more years here. Uh, and once my daughter graduates, then yes, I will be making a beeline to Colorado, of all places. Boulder, Colorado. That is my current goal. Because they have lots of sunshine in Boulder. And yes, it is a little colder, but I can live with that. I can live with that. Um, so that's kind of changed. And then on the last thing, which... Two things. Two things. Two things. And Jamie asked me this morning... and. Hope I, you don't mind me mentioning Jamie. Jamie's awesome to talk to, by the way. So blessed. Um, need my emotion stick. Hold on. But Jamie asked this question, which is really, really cool. Um, something about, have you had second thoughts? You know, for someone who is a, a intellectual... You, you think things through, right? I mean, you, you, you think things through, and through your intellect, you supposedly experience life, and we know that's not true. But to my fellow intellectuals out there, face up to your own bullshit. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the question is, regrets, not regrets, um, second thoughts. And um, as much as I hate to say this let me be honest with you and if you can't be honest if I can't be honest with my own blog I don't know what I'm gonna do okay <clears throat> if you are drinking a beverage I would advise you to put the beverage down if you have liquid in your mouth swallow okay because you might spit it out when I say this okay ready here we go. I do not know what a cis labia and sexual organ should look like from the outside. Now, 
Um, you can say, how in the hell is that possible? You have a child. I, I can't remember. So when I look on uh, my surgeon's post-op site to see her results, or I look at other results, I think Marcy Bowers is probably the standard to which you compare other results to. And realizing there's going to be variations, people, circumstances, whatever. When I see a post-op, full frontal, uh, spread eagle picture, it kind of grosses me out. Um, it reminds me of a face hugger from Aliens, which is exactly what H.R. Geiger was shooting for. Okay, most of his alien drawings and whatnot were like vaginas and and whatever. But if, if you look at, at the face hugger underneath, it's a vagina. It's a vagina with a sucker, okay? Um, and so then you would say, well, Robin or Karen, what the hell? Why do you, if, if it grosses you out, why do you want one? And I don't necessarily know if I have an answer for that, other than to say that um, women have them, and I am a woman, or I think I'm a woman, and so therefore I want to have one, okay? Having one will enable me to um, have sex with another man, with a man, as a woman, and that is why I want one. But I don't, you know, I don't walk around with pictures of labia and whatever. I mean, clitor, clitor, I don't look, you know what I mean? It's it's not something I really want. In the same way that I don't have big pictures of dicks, okay, in my room. I don't have male genitalia either. But it's one of those things, you know, so then you say, well, Again, if it grosses you out or whatnot, why do you want it? And I'm like, well, the feeling of it maybe doesn't gross me out. But, you know, I, I want to experience that. I want to experience penetration. Uh, I want to be the penetratee instead of the penetrator. Uh, I want to, you know, I want to have that sex again uh, in the female, as a woman, because I am a woman, etc., etc., etc. But I had to laugh because... I actually had to go and Google what a cis, um, again, spread eagle looked like because I couldn't remember. And then I put them side by side and I'm like, okay, well this, you know, uh, kind of like at the automatrist, you know, this eye is, I can see a cis labor, you know, labia, you know, and this eye, I can see the trans, you know, and there's no difference, you know, so that makes me very happy, but again, back to the idea, Jamie said, you know, do you have any doubts, and it was like, well, you know, over the last three days, uh, I have been familiarizing myself with my own layout and how it feels, and especially now that, you know, large portions of my elephant um, have no hair, you know, because I've been doing the surgical site. Um, you know what I mean? There's no hair. It's like smooth. And uh, truth be told, in some um, eight weeks, uh, eight, plus, eight plus weeks after I have my surgery, this hairless thing okay might be in another configuration but that's going to be it that's my skin you know and i don't want to be too graphic here but you know to feel what's going to be different parts is kind of neat i'm not sexual but i mean to feel in and up and whatnot i mean that to me that that's what gets me okay i'm doing the right thing you know, but it's interesting to think about, do you have any second thoughts or whatnot? And, um, you know, no, but I, I think it's, it's healthy to question. It's healthy. You know, if I just said to you, no, I don't, I don't ever think about it. You know, I would say, well, bullshit. You know, call me on it. So that's that. So that's still going on. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. 
um, like I said, I'm lying in bed and I'm like going, okay, and you know, ouch, from where um, hair, ingrown hairs and everything. I mean, it's we still have eight weeks of electrolysis and everything else, so that's cool. The last thing, and it really does not have to do with trans, being transgender or being a trans woman or whatnot, but I really have questioned a lot of my spirituality. And, and no worries if you want to end the video here, okay? Because you probably don't want to hear me talk about spirituality. But I really have tried to... Ooh. Crying. Uh, deal with the brainwashing, for lack of a better word, that I received as a child from my family who were Catholics. But they were, you know, Catholics that went to Christmas Mass and that was it. You know, we did try to go to Mass every week, but we didn't always make it. Very surface level, I would say, religion. And then when I actually went away to college um, is when I went to Mass. Oops. I went to Mass every day. I really enjoyed daily Mass. Okay, when I was younger, younger Catholic. And that was the, the time that I spent at the monastery. I almost became a monk, almost. I was asked to become a monk. I sh probably could have become a monk. I'm glad I didn't, the way this all worked out. Maybe I could be a nun. Is that possible? Hmm. Anyway, Sister Karen... Ooh, I look like a nun, don't I? I have a blue sweater. Um, but anyway, try not to make this into a joke because it's kind of serious. But, you know, getting over that spirituality that was so patriarchal in nature. Um, we have a God, the God. We have God. Embodiment of all good. All good is centered into this deity known as God, and it's a guy. You know, our Father who art in heaven, and the Father, and, and, and several times a day, I say, thank you, God, and I mean it. I mean, sincerely mean it. I am thankful, knock on plastic, I'm very thankful to be where I am at today and to be in touch with myself and what I'm doing, and I feel like I'm on the right path. No shit, no bullshit. Um, but I know that that's not the whole story. And I don't particularly care for, in what I would consider to be most religions, and again, coming from a Catholic background, the idea of the male being the dominant and the better and the female is subjective and everything else. I don't like that. And, and that goes way, way far back, even in, uh, in the Old Testament. You know, women had to be purified, uh, you know, present themselves in the temple, and they had to be purified when they had their period. And, you know, it, it, was, it was so much dejecting females over males. And to a certain degree, ooh, it's nice to have, in our current era, our current life this time contemporary uh, male and female priests and and things are changing it's not you know again it, it's you know but that's my programming and so i really have tried to broaden my horizon with the idea of which i was really attracted attra attra attracted to the unitarian universalist concept of god as being unity a divine being boy i look like rosie o'donnell don't i Holy shit. When did that happen? Oh my gosh. When did that happen? Um, sorry, derailed. Um, so I, again, I try to think about the, the female energy and the male energy, and I think that's what attracts me to Wicca so much, is that you still have a divine unity which I would consider to be God in the Catholic sense. 
and then you have the masculine and the feminine you have the, the female and the male the goddess and the god who are kind of work in harmony and together are part of this larger piece so i like that a lot but i really kind of have been struggling somewhat from a religious point of view because uh you know, just kind of again asking what what is important to me and what do I believe in and then how do I want to manifest that and that has definitely been something that's been on my mind and in this idea of stress and change and I don't have to have the answer for everything right now I'm still developing and I need to give myself time to do that so uh, I don't feel like I've necessarily gotten anywhere but I would say that, you know, I'm the happiest I've ever been, okay? And I feel like I am better off today than I was previously. And I'm curious to find out what tomorrow holds. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I feel this need to cry and I just can't get it out. And maybe... It's just maybe later today I'll have some time for reflection and be able to cry and whatnot. Um, it's definitely very different this week than last week. Last week I was so hell-bent on being worried about surgery. And now it's like, you know, I stay busy and whatnot. But then it's like I want to go walk on the treadmill because I know I'm eating regular food. But I don't have that I have to go do this now thing. Now it's like optional, but I really want to do it because I want to lose weight. And I'm trying to figure out everything that I just said in this video, you know, the stresses and where I'm going to go. And I need time, I think, to, to feel those out. So, and that is really the update today. Um... Not a whole hell of a lot else going on. It's my understanding. Um, I have one shot left. A little bottle here. And this little bottle contains five milliliters of what I am injecting into myself. Um, and so my company, insurance company, sent me a two-month supply. Okay, it's I inject myself every other week one milliliter. So in theory, this would last two months. However, um, once you pop it and you use it once, it's only good for 30 days. So it's kind of a shame. I'm going to waste half of this bottle because I can't use it anymore. It expires. Well, then I was talking to my insurance company this morning and the pharmacist, and I said, well, this is only good for one month. I'm going to need another one. They're like, oh, no, no. The numbers, you know, you got five milliliters. That should last you whatever. And I'm, I, that's my stress from today. It's like, do you understand? Yes, it is five milliliters. I only need one. In theory, that would be um, two months and a half, right? But I only can, once I open the bottle, it's only good for, so that's my stress of the day uh, that I am dealing with. And I am I'm dealing with it pretty well. I think I've 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 done what research I can do. I've reached out to my endo. My hope is that either we will find a substitute um, or another. Uh, we just have to do a month to month instead of trying to be clever and do two months. And and I realize again they were trying to save a, a dollar or two. Um, at the same time, I've also found out that this manufacturer P A R, Par Pharmaceutical, of Spring Valley, New York is no longer manufacturing Dell estrogen and that's why it's no longer on the shelves and um, so I put in a thing to my endo you know as well that uh, we need to come up with something else either another substitute or something and and I'm very thankful um, Carrie Thonin is her name Athena Health and Wellness and I'm so thankful to know her she is a, just such an awesome person so all right my friends on that note we have talked a long time, and I wish everyone well, and good luck in your transition, and uh, we will go on. This journey is not over yet, all right? So good luck to you, and have a good day.